hi, my name is Paul Budnitz. And I'm Huck G. And we're talking to you from the super plastic storage room because it seemed to be the best place to do this interview for Toy Art, which is awesome. Hello, Toy Art, we love you. So they sent me a bunch of questions. Yes. I'm going to ask you some of them. Okay, and I'll ask you the other ones. All right, All right go. Let's do it fast. So All right. No one gets bored. What is super plastic? Right, super plastic is. Uh, Super, uh, Super Plastic is, uh, is a talent agency for um, synthetic celebrities. So we're the home of Janky and Googiemon. Um, we also make, I think, some of the world's greatest designer toys. And we make clothing. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we hang out with Janky and Googiemon and get drunk sometimes. <laughs> we mostly just kind of have fun. It's like a vehicle for us to enjoy ourselves because, um, I don't know, make, and make beautiful things. Have yeah. That sounds absolutely great. Okay, shall I ask you the next question? It is. Why did you create Super Plastic and when? Well, we created Super Plastic because you fucking called me up and said, Hey, I got this idea to do something absolutely crazy. Do you want to do this all over again? And I said, yes. Yeah. yeah. But we wanted to do it differently. So this is different than other things that we've done. Yes. Together. Um, did you know that Huck was the first... <laughs> Both the first customer and the first employee at Kid Robot. It's true. When I first opened the store, he ran into the store. The first, uh, the first day I opened the first Kid Robot store in San Francisco, he opened the store. He opened the door. I opened the door, and this crazy guy with no hair ran in and bought all the toys and ran out. And basically, this is amazing. They like ran out, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll be in business. And then later, he asked for a job. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, it, I showed you a bunch of toy design. Yeah. Or, no, I told you I could make toys. <laughs> right. And did you want to see my designs? And you said, sure. Yeah. And you invited me over. And I went home and made a bunch of toys. Because and then, I hadn't actually And then he made quit to become an artist. <laughs> and then I said, okay. Okay, next. Both of you are established in the scene. What do you think you can still contribute to the designer toy scene? Oh, that's, a, that's easy. I mean, our, our creativity doesn't stop. So yeah. we just keep making. We basically new make ideas. the greatest stuff in the world. That's sort of our our line. Yeah. If it's not super amazing, then we don't make it. And I don't. I don't know. So there you are. Yeah. That's a good answer, right? Like your turn to ask me one. Um. How do you differentiate yourself from other companies? Because I think it's like you know the thing is it's like almost impossible to copy awesome. So yeah. we just do our own thing and we have our own style and it's just like that's what we do and we don't do anything else. Yeah. Pretty much, right? Yeah, it's pretty much. Because just... if you just try to copy other people, then you are copying other people. It's not genuine. Yeah, so that's yeah. what we do. Okay. So that's what, that's because it's art. <laughs> right? Okay, that's because it's art. Is that good English? Yes. Know. How do you choose the artists you work with, Huck? Uh, we work with... We only work... I work with the artists that inspire me and are, are, I consider the best. Like, right. I look at their work and I just think, holy shit, you're one of the best artists I've ever seen. And we don't work, work with, with prima you. donna assholes. Yeah, we just don't work with assholes. Okay. That's... That's... Okay. Um, I'll ask you another one. Do you have say or inputs in their designs? <laughs> it depends on who the artist is. Yeah. So sometimes. I mean, sometimes. it's a collaboration, really. Right. Everything, that's why our stuff is consistently amazing because it's a collaboration. We we consider everything we do, I do, everything is a collaboration. Like, Yeah, and my goal isn't to tell an artist what to do. My goal when I work with another artist is to try and get them to make the best possible art they can make. Right. And it's just figuring out how to get that out of them. That's all my job is. Right. Okay, next. Um, working with some of the most... You, you ask, come on, ask it out loud. <coughs> I don't want you to read. Working with some of the most established artists, how can you ensure that what Super Plastic will produce is different from what they can come up with than what they have come up with? I don't oh, know what I that see. Means. What is that? I mean? think, how do we differentiate our product from what an artist has made before, maybe? Um, next question. The next question, skip that one. <laughs> how do you protect Sorry. Super Plastic and the artists from other artists replicating their designs? Oh, well, because you can't, I already answered that. You can't copy awesome. Like, yeah. essentially, like, w like people have tried to knock off what we do in our old lives and in yeah. this lives, and big, giant, like, toy companies have knocked us off, yeah, and, like, and they, and they always do a crap job, and they go out of business. Yeah. Right. So, All right. Right. Uh, what do you think of bootlegs or reproductions? I think if because you're people... Suck Lord, bootlegs are amazing. But if you're <laughs> anyone else, like you should basically be arrested and put in prison for the rest of your life. I think you should be tortured with like 
you should be tortured with like what? Slow water, uh, slow tortured for water torture. What's the one where you get dripped? You on? get dripped on, but yeah. it's not. You get dripped on with like gin and tonic, so it's like even worse. It's like with a lemon gin and tonic, but it just oh, goes yeah. on your head yeah. all the time for yeah. your life. That's yeah. what I think about blue legs of reproduction. Yes, that was unless, easy. That was yeah. a real easy. Unless question. you're psychologist. Okay, I'll ask you one. What differentiates art toys from a typical toy in terms of production? Is there a specific thing and number of production? Do you believe in open editions? Uh, the the difference is art. It's it's art first. Yeah, yeah. And that's the sim the simplest way I can put it is that. We try and find a beautiful design. We don't care about the product that's attached right. to it or the license or anything else. It's just, it's art first and it's artist first. Yeah, and I think the thing about a, um, a limited edition is that like you can take a risk. So if you make, let's say 500 of something, you only need 500 people to like it. Yeah. And if, you know, if, if only 500 people like it, you've sold out and you've done your job. A lot of the, the problem, of course, is like if you make millions and millions and millions of something, you have to make something that like basically everyone sort of likes and nobody hates. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like kind of tepid water. It's sort of like drinking pee. I think actually. Can I say that? Is that all right? I don't know how that makes sense. Other than temperature. <laughs> you but sure. You can see yeah. kind of how our minds work yeah. over here or don't work. So on that note, can something be called art even if it's mass produced? Yeah, totally. Takashi Murakami kind of show, has shown that. Yeah. And like. And I think we've shown that. We have? Well, like, we don't well, I guess we anything. don't do mass produce anything. <laughs> okay. I think I think if the mass production itself is part of the art, then it's okay. But I can't think of what that would be. Right. I was just thinking. I just produce. my thing is that is that like essentially that if you're making something and that it's for everybody and it's like a creative thing, then it's not. Then by definition, it's not breaking any ground. Probably it occasionally happens. Someone does something that's so amazing and it just like blows your mind. But most of the time. People play it safe if they want to sell billions of things. Yes. Okay. All right. It's not risky. Right. There's no risk involved. Right. So you got to take risk. Look, if you just want to make a hell of a lot of money, there's no trick to make a hell of a lot of money. You just have to make shit. <laughs> and since, like, I'm, I feel like I have proven that I'm clearly smart enough to make a hell of a lot of money if I ever wanted to. <laughs> Which is true. So instead, I just sort of do dumb shit like this and don't make any money because I have a better time doing it. Yeah, that's that's why we always need that's an adult in the room. Right. Um, what is original versus appropriation? Oh, fuck. Oh, appropriation? That's easy. Okay. Go. What is original versus appropriation? I mean, this is great. So we used to have this... I, everyone has heard me say this before. It's really boring because I've been saying this for like 15 years. But we had this poster over at my last company that had this, whose name shall not be named, that had a big, um, that said nostalgia is death. So nostalgia is like when you take something from the past and then you just remake it like it is so that you can look at it and you go, oh, I'm so, I love that, that reminds me of blank. So it's like a remembered emotion, right? So it's not a real thing that's happening right now. You're remembering something you felt in the past and that makes you feel like good or something. So we don't do that here. Appropriation is when you borrow elements of lots of different things, you put them together to create something that's really truly new and creates a new feeling or a new statement, right? So Finn, who's recording this, has this awesome t-shirt that's made by uh, Andy Social Social Club, but it has says DHL in the front. It's like a yeah. DHL logo t-shirt, but it's made by like this fashion brand. And it's like super totally brilliant because they've appropriated the DHL brand for ironic purposes to add to their thing when you put the two things together you end up with something totally postmodern and like totally awesome what he said yeah um how do you cultivate creativity and originality in your company i think cause is a really good he's like the master of appropriation really right so he's appropriating i'm just telling the last question no <laughs> he's appropriating i mean the simpsons he's... he's appropriating mickey mouse he's appropriating like people who like skulls whatever the fuck that is and and he's and he's appropriating like Sesame Street and Snoopy. So he he appropriates shit and then he fucks with it. But when he's done with it, it's like something totally brilliant. Let's keep going. That. How do you cultivate creativity and originality in your company? Well, we wear on Wednesdays. We wear wacky shirts. Wacky shirt Wednesdays. We do not do that. <laughs> we do not do that. How do you cultivate creativity? So an originality in your company. Um, yeah, I think it's been said that at my companies when I'm in charge. I make everyone at the company cry at least once. 
<laughs> it's true. Because <laughs> it's true. Finn's nodding. Because <laughs> essentially, like, so here's the thing. <coughs> Every person in the world who comes to work, let's say, at a creative company, but I would just say in life, has a thing about them that fucks them up and holds them back. Mm -hmm. It's true. And we all have it. I have it. We all have a thing that's like a habit we have that limits us and limits our potential. And my job at the company, essentially, is to find that thing and then keep pushing your nose in it until you freak out and crack and then jump over that hoop and then do amazing work. Yeah. And that's how we make amazing work. And it's really like, and if you can't do that, then you tend not to last at this company yeah. very long. You get, like pushed, you get pushed outside of your comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, it's outside of your comfort zone. So it's uncomfortable to be creative sometimes. Because mm -hmm. otherwise you're doing the same thing over and over and then you're not being creative. Basically what he's saying is it's very uncomfortable to work here. Yeah, it's really <laughs> true. It's a little bit like Elon Musk just made that fucking crazy truck. I'm like, I love that truck. Do you like Elon Musk's truck? I just wish all the other cars didn't look like Pontiac. I wish all of the Teslas looked like that truck. Because right. they look like fucking Pontiac. No, I, I love, I love the, we're going to go down a fucking rabbit hole here. Like, I love their fucking brand. I love what they do for, I want an electric car by them. But, like, they have the most fucking beige, boring car ugly, design. five <laughs> ugly colors, except for the truck, which now looks like it came out of right. Alien. Right. Which is great. So why don't they all look like the truck? All right, I'm going to read, what kind of future do you see in the design, oh, you've got to answer this one. What kind of future do you see in the designer toy industry, and what will Super Plastics role be in that future? No uh, future. <laughs> No future. No, no. Go. Um, I actually see it. It's been a crazy roller coaster ride the last twenty years, and I see it. I, it's not. It's it's growing. It's. I mean, look at Designer Con. It's absolutely huge. It's massive. Everyone's right. loving it, and it's. It just keeps changing. I couldn't tell you where it's going to be in five years. It just constantly is changing. Yeah, I think that. I think the exciting thing is watching things evolve from. Like what was originally like very streetwear kind of street culture thing to art culture and now into like appropriate appropriation yes. culture and a lot of other stuff and then all the kaiju stuff came in and then the fashion stuff is now happening more than it ever did and it's, so it just keeps evolving. Yeah, it just and keeps then, oh, and then there's the high art stuff like you talking again about Murakami and it's creeping its way there. So it's I think it's going to be going for mm -hmm. ever as long yeah. as. And I mean, I don't really think about where we're going to fit in it because I just make cool stuff. That's exactly like, I just want to make cool shit. Yeah. So that's the secret. Make awesome things. Don't worry. Worry. And don't think about what everyone else is doing because it'll be intimidating. That's the other secret over right. here. We don't look at what other people are doing. We just right. act like ignorantly, like ignorant people. <laughs> we do. We do. And that's what makes it awesome. Okay. Thank you. We love toy art. Thank you for having us for this interview. And, and, um, uh, and we'll see you again in the Super Plastic Storage Room next year.